Hey everyone, welcome to Breaking Audio. My name is Dave. I'm going to be talking to you today about making track presets. Just some helpful tips that that I, you know, things that I do to save me some time. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, we're going to jump into Pro Tools here. Um, now, the way you make a track preset in Pro Tools is well, let's just make a little quick quick audio track here. We're going to call it VX, and we'll just throw a plugin on it, like something we might use while doing a vocal. We'll just go ahead and use a you know, we'll just make a real quick, like, you know, whatever, low filter thing, whatever. There we go. Cool. Now we have a track that we can turn into a track preset. So in order to do this, you make sure the track is selected. And you can select more than one track, by the way. I'll explain that in a moment. Go to track preset. Here, you can add yourself, you know, a category. It's kind of like a folder, right? So I can have all my presets within this one category. I know they're mine. Um, at the studio, that's important because there's several of us working there. Um, so, uh, VX, so I'll just leave it like that. VX, whatever. There we go. Bang. Now we got a we got a track preset. Let's delete this track and recall it. So, when you want to recall a track preset, you can go to create a new track, and it is stored in here, which is a little bit of an odd place in my opinion. But so this is like your folder, and this is like where each individual preset is. So if we load this VX, we will get our track back. So there it is. Let's just go ahead and delete that. I'm going to show you one that I made that I use pretty frequently. Every time I record vocals, really. Um, and I'll show you why. So here's mine. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's multiple tracks. So the one we just made was single. The way you make a multiple track preset is you just make sure all of these tracks are selected, highlighted in white, and you go to Save track preset and do the same thing, and it'll save all of it. It'll save the routing, it'll save your sends and things like that. Um, what we've got here is a mix of audio tracks and aux tracks, um, and it's got you know multiple plugins. Even my my cues are saved and everything on the outputs and you know where everything's going. Um, you know, basically what we're looking at right here is. Uh, a preset that I made because I like to use Melodyne. Now, I'm not going to go into Melodyne. I'll do a video on Melodyne later, but the reason I made this preset is because Melodyne, to set up in my favorite way, is, is a bit complicated to do. I like to have all of the music, okay? I've got my all music track up here with an instance of Melodyne on it. Currently deactivated because I'm on my laptop and I don't actually have Melodyne or the Great River or anything like that. Um, but I've got an instance of Melodyne inactive here on that, as well as my vocals. So when I go to use Melodyne, I activate it and I can play everything into it. And we'll get to Melodyne some other time. But uh, basically, it can be a pain to set up and very time consuming to like do all this stuff. So I'd rather just kind of knock it out in one preset and have it if I need it. Right? So on this, I've got just the all music track. A couple of basic things, you know, main, double, harmony, um, a bus for all that. Um, extra vocals, ad libs. I don't necessarily need these, so I can delete them if I don't want them. If I need more main vocals or doubles, I can duplicate them if I want them. Um, so I'm not trying to cover every single thing that I could possibly need ever for recording a vocal because you just end up with too much stuff, too much tracks, too complicated. It just gets crazy. So, um, you know, some of these tracks down here that don't have Melodyne on them, I put an auto-tune that's inactive just in case I want that because the disadvantage to Melodyne sometimes is if you record too many vocals, you know, I'm like, well, I don't really need to tune all these vocals and maybe I should have some other tracks laying around to throw stuff on, you know, just some extra bits, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe something's very simple and I could use auto-tune instead. But anyways, I've also got some effects here, uh, simple delay and reverb that I can use. Again, I could delete the delay if I don't need it because a lot of people don't really want delay on their vocal. Maybe, maybe they just want to touch a verb for tracking, you know. Uh, so this is for tracking, not for mixing. So this is a rather basic setup. Um, I didn't take the step of colorizing everything or anything, but this is, I just got used to it. This is this is what I pull up every time to track vocals, and it makes things pretty pretty easy. We also have outboard gear at the studio, which is why I don't have compressors uh, inserted on this because I've already got that kind of happening, um, and the EQ is usually for surgical stuff. So um, that's my preset for this. So sometimes people might ask me for something a little bit more complicated. So an example of that would be, um, you know, people want like vocoder effects, right? So I should make a preset for that because a vocoder is another thing that's really irritating the setup sometimes. So let's pop over, over to Ableton to check that whole thing out. Making a preset in Ableton is even easier than in Pro Tools. So 
I'm over here in my user, user library and I've created a place to store my custom made tracks. Let's say I had some effects and things like that on you know instruments on my MIDI track. Drag and drop it straight into my folder for, for tracks and then I have it uh, saved. That's it, there's no saving or anything. Um, to recall something, I drag and drop it into the project. So it's drag and drop both ways. And here's my vocal, uh, my vocoder, right? So what I've got here is a track, well, a an audio track and a MIDI track within a group. The group is important because you got to group it to save multiple tracks like this. So make sure you're grouped, and then when you drag it over here, you'll have everything inside. So we've got a um, an audio track that I took some time to set up. I gave a little vocoder pretreatment, a little bit of low cut, and a little bit of uh, high cut just to catch some sibilance or a gate. Sometimes like you know, T's and ends of words can trigger the vocoder. I don't want that, so I can kind of reduce it or get rid of it with between high cuts and gates and things like that. I've got my synth track set up, which of course routes into the vocoder, and that's kind of a pain to set up every time. You know, I, I made this preset, you know a few months ago and I haven't had to set up a vocoder again because I just pop open the same thing. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, yeah, that's where I'll leave it. So if you guys have any time saving things that you guys do, drums is another thing. Um, it would be very obvious, but uh, yeah, if you guys have any time saving stuff that you do with presets, let me know any suggestions, tips, whatever else. Yeah, I'm all ears. Uh, great. Have a good night. That's it from me.